Hey there, this is James Wilson with MTV String Training Systems and BikeJames.com and in this video it's the return of Bad Stick Figure Theater to show you how to properly use your hips to stay balanced on the bike. And the reason that I'm doing this is because of a recent online discussion I've uh, had with some people about the attack position versus what's known as the throne position. It seems that there's a couple different ways that people are trying to describe what proper balanced body position on your bike should be like, especially uh, when you're not pedaling, when you're, when you're using momentum downhill or just whatever the case may be. But uh, the difference between these two positions and, and really why there are two ends of a spectrum and you need to be able to use both and understanding the time and the place for both of these positions is the key to you staying balanced on the bike. It's uh, like I tell people in Jiu Jitsu when I t show them a technique. You know, the technique is not jujitsu. The technique is a window into the principles that are jujitsu. So, like the attack position versus the thrown position, which I'll get into more here in just a second, those are not how to ride your bike. Those techniques are not how to ride your bike. Those techniques are the window into the principles that are riding your bike. And once you understand these principles and the window that these techniques are opening for you, it, things just make a lot more sense and, and uh, you're able to apply what you need when you need it. So just get started here. The, to uh, kind of get things kicked off, this first figure here is kind of a neutral position. This is where someone would be when they're uh, seated pedaling. And the two things that you need to keep in mind with this are your center of gravity and the bike center of gravity because you're keeping the balance between those two things. When those things are balanced, you feel balanced. When those things aren't balanced, when your center of gravity is not in line with your, your uh, bike center of gravity for the task at hand, then that's when things feel unbalanced and get out of whack. And so your center of gravity is roughly here at your hips. You know, these are your hips right here. And so your bike center of gravity is roughly at the bottom bracket right here. Now again, there's gonna be some people that point out that it's not technically there, but that general area is where your bike's center of gravity is. Even if it's not the bottom bracket itself, it's in that area. So just for ease of discussion, we're gonna call it your bottom bracket. So again, your bike's center of gravity and your center of gravity are what we're looking at here and what's that relationship between them. So this is kind of a neutralist position where your center of gravity and the bike center of gravity are uh, you know, relatively lined up over each other. Now we have two other positions besides this neutral position and this is where we start getting into the attack position and what's uh, I guess is called the throne position as well. The first one is the attack position which is where you get your hips here behind your bike's center of gravity. So your center of gravity is now behind the bike's center of gravity. Now this mainly helps when you're in a situation where something can, where like you're gonna hit a rock or something like that and the momentum can carry you over your handlebars. You wanna have your weight back behind your bike's center of gravity. So at this point your bike is leading the charge, it's first, and your center of gravity second. So it's pulling your center of gravity through and because your center of gravity is back and, and has more weight than the bike center of gravity, it allows you to roll over things and, and you know, hit things on your bike that, and not fly over your handlebars. And so this is why this, what's known as the attack position where your butt's back and your chest is down low and you're really looking to get your butt back behind your seat and your bike center of gravity. That's why that position is taught a lot for a downhill position because it uh, it's kind of a safe position. You know, people feel safe with their with their center of gravity in the back of the cockpit. I, I, I look at this, you know, center line. Are you behind the bike center of gravity? Well, you're behind the cockpit, or we're going to get into here in a second. Are you in front of the bike center of gravity? So this one here, the main advantage of it is keeping you from going over the handlebars. Now you do start to run into problems though because as your weight shifts behind the bike center of gravity, you start to take weight off of the front end. And your, your front end, this is how you steer, that's your strongest brake. And so you, you want to keep some weight on the front end, which is why it's important that you hinge and push the butt back and let the chest come down when you're getting in this position, not just push your center of gravity back while maintaining a high chest. Because when you do that, 
all of your weight shifts. What you really want to do in this attack position, this hinge position on the bike, we're looking to spread our weight out. I want to spread my weight out and, and get weight behind the bike center of gravity while keeping some weight on the front end so I maintain braking and the ability to steer and all of that stuff. And so that's the main thing I'm looking for from this attack position, butt behind my bike center of gravity, get my weight spread out so I still have a little bit of weight on the front end. And this is mainly good for keeping me from going over the handlebars. But here's the deal. There's a lot of times on the trail when you're not in danger of flying over the handlebars. There's not a rock or something in front of you. And so you don't have to always keep your center of gravity in this attack position. This is where people get in trouble is they get taught one position or one technique and they try to apply it to all situations on the trail. Now, you definitely want to be in this attack position if you're, you know, a, on a steep downhill or you know there's rocks and stuff in the uh, that you need to deal with, you need to keep your weight back a little bit, but you need to learn how to go to the front of the cockpit as well. And so this is where this position is. Now, you see your center of gravity is in front of the bike center of gravity. Now, what this does, this does a couple things for us. This, uh, one, it makes it easier to look down the trail. With our head up, it's much easier to keep our eyes down the trail. Here, we really have to you know, strain our neck up. It's, it's much harder for us to keep our eyes down the trail. Two, it's a stronger pedaling position because now when we have to pedal, we're able to get full hip extension, put our weight into the pedal stroke. Back here, we're not able to get nearly as full hip extension. We're not able to put our weight into the pedal stroke because our weight's back behind the bottom bracket. We also have more weight on the front end, which improves our ability to brake and steer. And so this position here is a really good position. Like this, you really want to be comfortable and use this position a lot. And again, this is getting into what some people call the throne position. So instead of being back like this, you'll see riders riding more like this. You know, they still have the bent knees, but it's looking more like they're sitting in a chair because now they have their chest up, right? And so this position here is the front of the cockpit. This is seeing riders in this position here, but you want to be able to if you come up to a section where you know you start to um, go down because again remember this is all about the relationship so you know as you start to go up the bike center of gravity is going to change and so you're going to have to change your center of gravity as you go down the bike center of gravity is going to change position so you're going to have to change position so this dynamic movement of your hips to maintain balance in the position that you want on the bike is really what we're looking for. And when I say balance, I don't mean like perfectly balanced because it, you know, when I'm back here, I'm not balanced. I have a little bit more weight back and that's the whole point. Here I have a little bit more weight forward. You know, this should feel like running. In, in the book Jeet Kune Do, uh, Bruce Lee described running as feeling like you're falling forward, chasing your center of gravity, but never quite catching up to it. And that's what we're looking for. You're actually in front of the bike center of gravity, which means that if you, you know, the bike wasn't continuing to go with you, it's like running. You know, you're leaning forward. You're a little bit in front of your center of gravity. And, you know, if you were to trip, you'd fall, right? And, but you don't trip and fall and then start running backwards, like, you know, with your weight back like this all the time. Yeah, you're not going to fall like that. But that's not a, a really efficient way to run. You learn how to, you know, go from leaning forward to a little bit more neutral position, you know, depending upon the terrain. And that's the same thing that you want to do on the bike. So learning how to shift the hips forward and spend some time in the front of the cockpit in this, this throne position as it's called is really important, but it's a really dangerous position to get stuck in as well. So you certainly don't want to just stay here because you're going to end up flying over the handlebars a lot and you don't want to just maintain this position and push your weight back because you know we get straight arms which isn't what we want because you lose your ability to use your, your arms for suspension and we don't have any weight on the front end. So what we want to do is be able to transition from this throne position in the front where you know we're able to ride a little more aggressively to switching back to this attack position where we're not able to ride as aggressively because of the terrain conditions. We need to you know, be a little bit more safe getting our weight back and again knowing that, that is, uh, you know, there's some compromises with that position from a, a pedaling power standpoint, a braking and steering pressure standpoint. So again, like that's even when you get back in this position, that's why it's so important, I've already mentioned this, that you don't, you know, you want to keep pressure and weight on your hands so that you're not losing your steering and your braking from the front end. And so uh, again, hopefully this uh, makes sense and clears some of this up because again, it's not an either or thing. It's not attack position or thrown position. It is both. 
and it's knowing how to use both as the situation uh, dictates that's going to make you a great writer and not getting married to one technique and trying to use it for everything that you come across. So again, just keeping in mind, it's this, this dynamic use of your hips forward and backward in the cockpit that we're looking for. This is also what allows us to pump, uh, you know, in pump tracks or pump terrain because as I come up to something, if I shift my weight forward and come up, now I'm actually projecting some of my center of gravity and weight up and over the rise, which means that's less weight that my bike has to carry, which means that I carry more momentum up over the rise. And then as I come to the backside of something, I can push the bike down and this push is shifting into the hinge position and pushing the bike in front of me is what allows me to actually push and create momentum on the back side of stuff. So it's this movement from you know the front of the cockpit to the back of the cockpit that allows us to maintain balance, allows us to uh, you know um, con conform to the terrain and pump the back side of stuff. So you know not getting stuck with your hips either in front of or behind your bike center of gravity and not getting stuck in one position either either the hinge attack position or the squat thrown position is really the take home message learn how to use both depending upon the terrain but at the end of the day really what it's all about is balance on the bike and maintaining that and learn how to use your hips for that so anyways I know this was a lot of info but uh, if you stuck with me, hopefully you think it was worth it. Um, once again, this has been James Wilson with MTB Strength Training Systems. You can check me out online at bikejames.com. Got a, other uh, you know, good tips like this, some free workouts and stuff you can sign up for. So uh, anyways, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this tip, and I'll talk to you in the next one.